Welcome to Slasher Sunday, people. I just got done recording a long-ass podcast. As you can see back here, I'm still uploading the files. So, <laughs> oh man, I've had quite the night of movie talk. So let's uh, finish up the night with my favorite fucking thing, Slasher Sunday. I did a podcast on a slasher film right back here. So, uh, Killer Party, that'll be coming soon here in a couple days or whenever Rebecca gets the time. Thank you for doing that, Dex. Um, all right, so Girl House. Now, this is a film that really gets no, you know, conversation about it at all. It, it rarely gets brought up. It came out in the last five years and it is a fucking awesome slasher movie and I just felt like revisiting it. Uh, it is on Amazon Prime, in case you want to check it out. I give it a high recommendation, so if you want to wait to after you watch it to watch this, uh, go on over there and, and check it out, because it, it's a really fun one, man. It's got a lot of hot chicks, a lot of nudity, good nudity. It's got a lot of great kills. It's a really fun slasher movie, high production value definitely get on it. So it starts off here, spoilers from here on out, it starts off here with a quote from Ted Bundy essentially saying that porn is bad for you. Uh-oh, I'm fucked. Uh, then we get Loverboy's Origins here back in 1988 and Selena Kyle is chasing him around. Yes, I'm a Gotham fan. If anyone else is, you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about. And she makes fun of his little acorn dick little shout out to Brad Thornton. We were talking in a podcast recently and I made fun of his dick. I've never seen his dick, so it might be this big for all I fucking know. But I was jokingly making fun of it and he called his dick an acorn and I, I thought it was funny. And uh, then she said it here. She was like, it looks like an acorn. And I was like, hey. Um, and then she's yelling, come back, lover boy. So we got the genesis of that name which he takes on with him. And then, man, he sticks a he sticks a fucking thing of wood like right into her spokes and she flips and just face plants. I mean, this is like a, what, 12-year-old girl, 13-year-old girl, something like that, maybe 14 at best. She looks real young. Um, I want to say she's like, this is 2014. This is four years ago. She's like 18, 19 now. So yeah, she'd been like 14, something like that. Um, face plants. Boom, right into the fucking uh, bridge. That was gnarly. And then she gets up and her fucking mouth is bleeding. Her face is all cut up. Just takes her bike and he throws it, you know, into the ravine down there. And she's like begging for her life and he just kicks her ass. And like the way they pan over and they show her body and it's just laying there face down in the water. I don't know what it is about that, but it just looks evil, man. It just looks fucked up to see a kid just sprawled out after taking this gnarly fall face down in the water like even if she survived it she's sitting down there drowning not to being able to do a thing about it i don't know it's just it was a really fucked up scene and a, a great way to start this movie then the main character here she gives us one of the most hardcore boob teases which she does throughout the entire film and you're thinking hey this chick was an american wedding and she shows her tits in that why isn't she going to show her tits in this movie she's fucking gorgeous she's got an incredible body in this film it's her right to choose whether she shows her tits or not absolutely i'm not saying it isn't i've said this before but why why please come on now this is what we're here for, and this movie's about that. You're a cam girl. I'm sorry. For me, it should have been a requirement. I know this sounds fucking, you know, I'm a pig. Okay, I'll fucking say it. I'm a pig. But really, this is a film about cam girls who get naked in front of the camera. Her role is her doing this and, and teasing and showing her tits to the audience and everything. And every other girl in the movie is, yes, there's enough nudity in this. To, to fucking, um, you know, savor my, my tit lust, I guess. But I don't know. It's just like the main character of this movie is doing cam stuff and we don't see her naked. It's bullshit. We see a lot, though. I mean, we see almost everything but the nipples throughout and she is stunning. So, you know, it is what it is. I just, I thought it was really annoying that she te teased them that much. And then, and then it's just like, nah, I, I just, I don't get that. Um, so yeah, essentially this place is like a real world or big brother or something for porno. 
and this guy set up this house for everyone to watch and she comes in she's gonna make a ton of money uh this house is supposed to be unhackable untraceable no one's gonna be able to find it but lover boy is this genius i guess to be able to do this i don't know he seems like a fucking moron to me but that might just be his like ptsd for what happened to him when he was like 12 that pussy um oh my god a girl said you had a small dick when you were like 12 oh my goodness who didn't have a small dick when they were 12 um but yeah he he's flirting with these girls and on there and they're like oh he's a sweetheart and it's funny to me though that she's like i'm gonna come on here and no one's gonna recognize me you're going on like this super famous porno site you're gonna get recognized okay these guys are gonna record it this place is super super familiar to a lot of people you know what movie this reminded me of weirdly and i can't believe i'm saying this positively but halloween resurrection this is like kind of essentially the plot for Halloween Resurrection in a way um, where they're watching on the live cams and the guy is like trying to get to the girl in the house and all like it's kind of like that the killer's in the house and he's trying to alert her and couldn't believe it and it's like oh my god Halloween Resurrection could have worked if it was girl house just throw a Michael Myers mask on the killer in this and this would have been a 10,000 times better Halloween Resurrection so I don't know Anyway, um, <clears throat> I love how when they come into that house first up, there's a girl sitting there on the fucking couch and she has like a full face mask that she has on and her hair is up and a roller set. And then she leaves the room for a minute. She comes back, her hair is down, it's all fucking put together and her face is completely washed off and she has full makeup on. <laughs> I was like, hmm. They try to make it look like natural, but... That was makeup, people. She had, like, rouge or, like, blush in her fucking... Oh, my God, no. Absolutely not. Uh, it, who cares? It's just a movie. But I always, I thought that was pretty fucking funny. And almost all the women in this movie are just hot as fuck. So that's a huge plus here for me. And most of the people who watch my stuff, because that's what these movies are for, right? TNA and, and kills. And we get that in spades. Um, and... When she's doing her first cam, like everyone but the blonde chick who's against her is like rooting her on and watching her do her little thing. And they're just like, yeah, go get it, girl. I don't know. I like the little camaraderie between them. And, and not everyone was just like the jealous asshole. Of course, they had to have the one obligatory cunt. I uh, haven't used that phrase in a while. Dylan. Dylan Clancy. Um, but yeah, she was a, a to be expected. Um, not sure what the heroin addict was in this for, to be completely honest. It's her role. I mean, I don't know. But her kill was cool, so fuck it. But I And she had a hot body and all that, so I'm not complaining. I just didn't really understand the point of her coming back. Like that, I guess that was to show that this, was, this guy was actually a good guy that ran the place and he wasn't a total smut peddler, even though he was a smut peddler, but not a bad one. I don't know. I just didn't see the point of her character showing up in the movie, but... It is what it is. Uh, it didn't bother me. It just, I noticed it. Um, and, mm, yeah, just the, the idea of going on a live thing like that and just living in a house where everyone's, like, jerking off to you and whatnot and, like, people are just watching you all day, watching you while you sleep, watching you while you go to the bathroom, watching, it's like, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I don't know if you could pay me enough I don't, i'm sure there's girls out there that would do this for sure but and men as well but mm, i'm good i'm good um yeah the owner turns out to be gay that was interesting um so i guess he's not there for that he just wants to make money and uh the guests when they're brought out are blindfolded so that that kind of explains that unless they're like liam neeson and fucking taken and he's like marking on his hand and <laughs> You could figure it out. I have a particular set of skills to find your whorehouse. They're not whores. They're just girls trying to put themselves through college. I'm being serious. They're not whores. <laughs> That's a, that would give the whores a bad name. I, I don't think they're... Anyway. Um, I like the chemistry between her and the, the nerdy guy. I, I thought that was cute. I thought they were, I thought they were uh, believable. Like, a lot of the times, I'm like, am I supposed to believe this dude could get this chick? 
And yeah, it's a little uneven, but it's not so much so that I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. I, I genuinely thought they had a cute little connection. And I was like, oh, like I was rooting them on. I don't know. It worked for me. So sometimes I knock that, but in this one, I actually thought it was good. I, I liked the kid and I liked their interactions when he was getting all cute around her and he didn't know how to talk and all that. Sometimes that would be annoying and I'd be like, how the fuck? But I don't know. He pulled it off. So I dug it. Uh, I also love that we actually get to see the killer in the movie. Like, we know who he is. Before he throws on the mask, how many fucking movies have you know, that you know that do that? They either keep the killer's face exposed and, and show you who he is the whole time, or they throw on a mask from the beginning and then reveal who the killer is at the end. But we actually get to know him from his backstory to who he is, why he does this, the whole shebang, and then he goes and grabs a mask and comes and kills him and stays hidden for the rest of the film. Interesting, right? That's very interesting. Um, I've never seen that before, I don't think. Off the top of my head, uh, maybe someone will be like, what are you talking about? It's in this movie, but for right now, I can't think of anything. But I did. I liked that because it gave him emotional depth. Like, it wasn't just a faceless killer. Like, that mask was creepy. I liked the mask. I liked how it was all done. But if it was just that, it wouldn't have had the same impact that it did. Like, I, I did like to see his backstory. I liked to see where, why, you know, where he was coming at, um, you know, on this and I, all that stuff. I thought that worked really well. And I liked the guy who did this uh, role here in the movie. Uh, he has, like, a fucking, he's, like, a rapper or musician or something. He only has, like, one name, like, Madonna or something. I don't know, that Blaine or Blaine. No, it's, like... Like, not Bane, or, or... It's something like that, though. What the fuck is it? Doesn't matter. Um, but I thought he was good. I really liked his performance in this. He really came off as that awkward, um, insecure, um, you know, loner who's in his basement typing on the keyboard trying to get any kind of acceptance but is also still hurt from the past. And all that. It was a good performance. It's not going to get any, uh, you know, attention for, for acting or anything, but good stuff you know we don't usually get that from our killers right killers are usually just faceless idiots and, and people are like i don't want a backstory i just want to see people get killed but i like it and i thought it created death so blow me um and the the women in this movie attacking him on there is just so dumb it just is, from a business standpoint is dumb they were all saying what a sweetie he was before yes they say a picture of him and he's gross but uh do you think hot guys are talking to you on the other side of the camera? I mean, some of them might be, but for the most part, a lot of these guys are doing this because they can't get laid by girls like you. That's why strip clubs are so popular and whatnot. I never used to understand strip clubs until I realized like a lot of the people who were going to them. Like I never understood strip clubs for guys that were good looking, I guess. I was always see that like I'd see some in there whenever I got dragged to one. I fucking hate them personally. Why am I gonna pay a girl to tease me and then not have sex with me? Like, you know, I, I would understand going and getting a hooker, but you're gonna pay for them to get you hard and then you gotta go jerk yourself off. I got porno for that. I, I, I don't. I just. I don't get strippers. I don't get it. But then I see some of the guys in there and I'm like, dude, this is the only way a girl like that will talk to them. So I just, I don't, it's not for me because I, I personally, I, I, you know, I like a girl. I, I go after her and, you know, I, I've done fairly well for myself in the, in, in the past. And so I, I guess it's just not, I just don't get it. Um, but yeah, like these girls should know that the majority of guys behind the computer that are giving them all this money that are fucking putting them through college and supporting whatever other heroin addicts, or, you know, addicts, uh, addictions and whatever they probably look like this guy so the fact that they're smashing him and they know like every camera in the house has a fucking microphone on it and whatever and they're talking to him right there and they say it loud enough for him to hear it's like why would you take one of your fucking main guys they're like oh he's a sweetie and they're like if you think he's a sweetie then why are you making fun of how he looks you know he probably looks like that a and B, like, it's just fucking mean for no reason. Financially, that makes no sense. Fucking, like, morally, that makes no sense. I don't know. It's just a fucking stupid thing. And I was like, good, I hope you fucking die, idiots. So those couple characters that called him out like that and then put his picture up on the board and all that, 
I mean, he, he put that out there because he was just like, you think I'm handsome? All right, fine. I'll show you a real picture of me. And he was like trying to gauge her response. And she was like, you're beautiful. Yeah, she gets scared. And it's very clear. She's like, ugh, at first. But she tries to pull it together and, and, and give him her, you know, her uh, nice sugar-coated version. And, uh, you know, a lot better than these other idiots do. I'm not sure why he comes after her and not them when she's the one. But I guess he probably thinks that she put that picture up there and not the other girl because he sent it to her and not the girl who comes and finds it. So I can only imagine he thinks that's her that did that. So I guess that makes sense. Um... But, yeah, it wasn't, so that sucks. Um, yeah, the door slam on, on the fucking security guard just smashes his head. Ooh, that's a gnarly kill. And then the girl, the, the drug addict, in the pool, and he crushes her head, and then she's just floating there. That's another great kill. Um, and then he cuts the girl's face, the hot blonde chick. He cuts her face up, and then he cuts all of her fingers off. And she's, like, trying to open her doorknob, but the blood is too slick, and she has no fucking fingers and dexterity to try to open it. That's fucked up, man. And then she has, like, a total uh, Savannah moment, or um, the girl in Seven that kills herself because of vanity. Um, yeah, Savannah was a porn actress in the 90s, dating Polly Shore or whatever, and she got in a car accident killed herself because of what I've heard because of how she looked. She just, you know, that would ruin her career. She broke her nose and that was it for her. So she offed herself. Um, yeah, vanity, man. I don't know. Someone just hacked your face and cut off your fingers and all that. And that's all she had, though. You have to remember that. Like, this woman had nothing else. She was that kind of chick who didn't pay attention in school. She didn't do anything. She had no other fallbacks because she just got by on her good looks. And this is all she had. And so when he took those away from her, she was like, I have no personality. I have no nothing. I'm fucked. I'm done for. End it. And she does. She kills herself. And that's brutal. But I think it's very true to her character, as, as messed up as it may seem. Um, and... <clears throat> I do like that when she confronts her, you know, little boyfriend in this. I should have wrote down names, damn it. Um, but the, the goofball, the two main characters, the guy and the girl. Um, I like when she confronts him or like says something about it. Like, oh, isn't it coincidental that you were out here in all this? And he's like, well, it wasn't like I know about Girl House. Like I commend the guy for being completely fucking honest. He knew that could have went south and wrong. He did start judging her, though. Probably not the best move. He ended up being right because lover boy, but if he wasn't right because of that, I mean, you don't, you went there knowing she was doing this and then you're going to judge her for it. Like, no, I'm sorry. I don't agree with him in that moment. I do agree with his, you know, being honest. He should have been up honest up front, but she would have ran away instantly. I get that. But judging her was just a lame move on my, uh, in, in my, opinion um but she gets over it and then they continue on um and let's see um that security guard that one that's introduced in the beginning uh he sucks at his job he's like hey i'm gonna have to tell you to leave or whatever and he just lets him get all the way close to him and then kills him <laughs> i was like um okay guess uh, we get a fucking, uh, the killer in this, the mask and everything, it was giving me hard Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the next generation, the movie everyone hates. I don't hate it, but uh, it was giving me that look. Him in that movie uh, totally looks like him. Um, but I had it up. I do. It's like, there you go. Oh, no, he's not. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, a little bit, right? I mean, that's not exactly the mask that he wears in the movie. But if you know the movie pretty well. Um, but anyway. Um, where the fuck was I? Uh, death by dildo. Death by fucking dildo. Shoves a dildo down her throat and then tapes it. That guy's an asshole. That guy that she goes into the room to fuck. Please stop having sex. I've said this in another video, but stop rewarding douchebag behavior like that she's sitting on the couch with her boyfriend and he's ma mocking love and she's like keeps telling him no i want to finish the movie like wait 20 minutes and i'll fuck you and he's just like 
I can't wait 20 minutes. And he's like bashing her fucking theory, you know, her ideas of love. And he's like saying, oh, well, you know, with all the options we have today and all this, like, it's just not real. And then she's like, now fuck me. And it's like, I don't know. He's such a douchebag. And yes, she's supposed to be shallow and whatnot, but there's some more depth to her. She cares and she wants love. And, and I don't know. Don't fuck people like that. Okay. That guy's an asshole. I do like the, the girl. It's the drug addict, right? She jumps in the pool. Um, I thought that was smart how she took a rock and she bashed the fucking window open. She was lucky as shit to hit it with the rock to knock the thing out of the door. But hey, man, that was cool. That guy, the, 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 the fucking asshole I was just talking about, he gets his head sawed off in a sex swing. That was pretty great. Um, and then uh, the main girl here goes and knocks out some of the cameras. So that he can't find her, but then at the same time, she can't be seen by the people. I don't know. She's just trying to stay alive at that point, so it's a smart move. Um, she does get the killer on the ground, knocks him out cold, and doesn't even at least tie him up, capacitate, incapacitate him. It's something, nothing, just run off and let him go. I don't know. I thought it was kind of freaky when he was running at the door when that dude showed up. And was like, she was like trying to tell him what was going on. He just was fucking like slow-mo running. I don't know. It was, it was pretty freaky. I liked it. Um, and Devin, there's the, the chick's name. The, the hot blonde chick who killed herself. Um, and then the, uh, the fucking, um, she cuts all the cameras in the house. Lures lover boy down into the basement. And then goes full Buffalo Bill style. Goes you know, night vision camera in in the house to find him and then stabs him in the stomach. So it was pretty smart that she did that. Uh, a little silence in the silence of the lambs in reverse as opposed to the killer doing it, it is the protagonist. Um, and I thought it was interesting, though, that he brought all of those tools with him in a full tool, you know, um, case and, and the whole thing, toolbox, and... With all the things he was pulling out, he didn't have a flashlight? Really? Okay. Um, and I thought the lines that the friend was delivering on the computer at the end, he's like, I'm never going to look at porn again, and I'm going to need counseling and whatever. I thought that's fun. that stuff was pretty funny. I liked him. Um, I also like that this movie completely subverts your expectations of how this is going to end. Like... You think that this guy's rushing there to save the damsel in distress, and no. She fucking, you know, she gets him on the ground. She fucked up once, but she does not fuck up the second time. She don't pull no Lori Strode where she lets him fucking get up a couple times. No. She gets him down once, she learns her lesson, and when she gets up again, she grabs that thing and she pummels his face. And when he tries to come back together, you think like, oh, the cops are going to come in, the boy's going to come in, whatever, and save the day. No. She fucking, he like does something else and she just bashes his whole skull and it collapses and then the kid gets there and he just helps her out of the fucking house and tells them like don't film her or whatever and that's it she saved herself good for fucking you and good for these kinds of movies for making it seem like he's gonna like in the end he didn't do anything he didn't help at all <laughs> it didn't matter he didn't even need to be a part of the movie but that's cool. It's cool that, you know, you think like, oh, it's just going to happen. He's going to come to kill her at the end and the kid's going to be there with a gun somehow and shoot him or something stupid. And no, she protects her fucking self. She does not need a prince to come and save the day. She can damn do it herself. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, it is like three in the morning. I got to go to bed. Uh, we'll do Monster Monday tomorrow. Good night.